Hey, what's up you guys? It's Ruthie and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to go into chapter 44 of The Murder House by James Patterson and David Ellis. So let's get right into this video. This video may contain sensitive topics and foul language. If you do not wish to continue, I suggest you click off the video now. You have been warned. Chapter 44. The gate opens and Noble Walker strides through it, looking around as if he's entering a new world. It may feel that way to him. Prison, from my experience, on the other side of the bars at least, is a universe unto itself, especially for the lifters. Lifers, the loss of hope is power is a powerful toxin, like being dead while alive. I've sent a lot of people to Sing Sing, murderers and rapists and even some drug dealers, but there's nothing fun about doing it. If I could run the world, I'd find another way to treat most of these criminals, most of them, not all of them, but find widespread solutions to widespread problems in this country so we would just bring build big prisons and stick everyone inside them and for the most part forget about them once they're gone. Noah stops short when he's, his eyes come to rest on me where I'm leaning against my car. He looks different, not just the short prison haircut which makes him look younger, but also something in his eyes more relaxed, even refreshed. They said I had a ride, he says. That's me. He looks at me considering. Don't look so happy, I say. He raises an eyebrow. Hey, I'm not putting a gun to your head. No, you did that once already. He has a small bag with him things he brought into the prison he walks over and gets into the car i walk around to the other side and climb in my 10 year old chevy is exact isn't exactly a limousine but it beats the hell out of a prison transport bus your own personal copy i say dropping a new york post on his lap the first page headline new york owes you an apology quoting the judge with the text underneath uh, officer's emotional testimony clears surfer jesus of murder charges Noah reads a little of the article then exhales and gazes out the window I didn't think your testimony was emotional, he says. I couldn't tell how you felt. That makes two of us. He looks over at me but doesn't say anything. Pure heat radiates off him, the source of which I can't place. Maybe anger, aggression, bottled up rage. I kick on the air conditioning. Must be the unreasonably warm March weather. That must be it. Yeah, not a word passes between us as I turn onto the Long Island Expressway. I focus on the road and flip through the radio channels. No kind of music seems right, so I go to talk radio all about spring training for the Yankees and Mets. It's been so warm in New York this March, I'm not sure the Yankees ever needed to travel to Tampa to practice. All the while, Noah says something, says nothing, just stares at me. Once again, I turn the AC down or up, whatever. I make it colder and pull my shirt off my sticky chest. Something flutters through me in some sense of forbidding danger anxiety. You want to stop staring at me, I say? Are you going to arrest me? I look over at him, his prison haircut high and tight, accentuating his thick neck and shoulders concealed previously by his long hair the beard is gone too but he hasn't shaved in a couple of days you're sweating he says no i'm not my mistake but he's still turned toward me as if any moment he might lurge at me or something that wouldn't be a smart move for a guy who's finally tasting freedom again but maybe he likes doing that living on the edge pushing his luck or maybe he just wants to make me nervous we drive like that for a while i turn up the radio as if hearing the speculation over marino rivera will 2012 be his last year at a higher volume will someone shield somehow shield me from Noah's stare are we driving through Queens he breaks the silence do you expect me to thank you no I say I don't need your gratitude good because you don't have it you lied at the trial you're the reason I got locked up to begin with I whip the car to the right swerving across a lane of traffic just making the exit for Little Neck Parkway I find a small park by Horace Harding and pull the car over. Get out, I say, as I push open the car door. I walk into the park and wait for him to meet me there. He walks toward me briskly for a moment. I think he's not going to stop, that he's going to knock right into me or put his hands on my throat. He stops just short of me, close enough that I can see a tiny nick above his lip, that I can smell him, the prison smell of sweat and rage. Did you kill them, I ask? His eyes narrow and his head tilts slightly like he doesn't get the question. You have double jeopardy now, I say. No one can ever prosecute you again for Melanie and Zach. So now it's just you and me. Did you kill them? He smiles, bemused. You gotta be kidding. You were framed, yes. But that doesn't mean you're innocent. Lang thought you were guilty. He just doesn't think he could prove it. You came. You can frame a guilty. No, he spits. I didn't kill them. My heart banging against my chest, choking my throat, my hands bawling into fists. I ask the next question. What about my uncle? He shakes his head. You're unbelievable. Tell me, I say. He regards me for a moment. He takes another step forward, leaning into me so close. It's as if he's about to make a pass at me. I hold my breath and steal myself. I don't think I have double jeopardy for that murder now, do I, detective? You might as well, I say. You're a media darling. We'd look vindictive if we prosecuted you again. Sebastian Akers would sooner swallow his tongue. 
his own tongue so what's it going to be cowboy his nose almost touching mine his breath on my face his eyes searching mine the heat radiating off of him okay he says i'll answer your question his face moves around mine his razor stubble against my cheek his lips touching my ear i didn't kill your uncle he whispers he draws back and turns and walks to the car that's the end of this chapter i will see you guys in the next video bye